presented the history of Mission Viejo through the eyes of uh, the developer, Mission Viejo Company. Today, we'll uh, visit those early years when Mission Viejo emerged from the rolling hills of the O'Neill Ranch, and much of what we know and experience now in this city was created. In doing this, we'll see how three key figures made a legacy by taking an idea for a new town, pitching it at just the right time, and with the cooperation of the landowners, created the community we call Mission Viejo. And somewhat sadly, we'll remember some of the memorable places that once were part of Mission Viejo, but for one reason or another aren't here anymore. It was 1963, and a young 31-year-old Newport Beach developer named Donald Bren becomes aware that a 4,000-acre portion of the O'Neill family's ranch is under discussions for development, and ultimately, he wins the right to be the master developer. Bren brings in Phil Riley, his real estate attorney, as executive vice president, and Riley brings in his friend and colleague, Jim Tepfer, former planning director for Santa Ana, to design the new town. Together, this team prepares a master plan, incorporating Bren's innovative ideas on comprehensive design, community, and marketing. It was a plan that the O'Neill family liked, and so they placed their trust in it and in Bren, Riley, and Tepfer. In November 1965, the launching of Mission Bill was announced. So what made this new town so attractive? After all, this land was just rolling hills with cattle 12 miles south of Santa Ana and out in the boondocks. Actually, the success of Mission Viejo was pretty simple. Bren, Riley, and Tepfer came up with an appealing plan in the right location and at the right time to catch the growth of the county as population moves south from Los Angeles. While that sounds simple enough, making the plan work consistently through the years was the tricky part. Cash flow to pay for infrastructure, approvals from jurisdictional agencies, fluctuating mortgage rates, and economic cycles were just some of the things that could have derailed the team in the early years. Certainly part of the success was the breath of a new environment. No gaudy signage on unattractive thoroughfares. No telephone poles. All utilities were put underground. Attractive setback landscaping in common areas and aesthetically pleasing street designs were part of the team's ideas. However, Bren's research and experience told them that to really be successful, they needed to build a place where in each individual living in Mission Viejo was a part of the community, what he called the total environment. Bren said that as a community developer, we must be concerned with the interrelationship of people and the community in which they live. He said, we've taken much time to think about the environment we're creating at Mission Viejo. So after spending several years studying new towns in the United States and Europe, Bren said, we've taken the best of these communities and incorporated this in our planning philosophy for a better way of life and in commuting, uh, creating community pride. So the early years were the creation of community, not just buildings and improvements, but activities, events, and gatherings. This 1993 video produced by Mission Vale Company for its 30th anniversary gives a glimpse of those early years. Eric, would you roll the video? Once upon a time, before God created man, the O'Neill family's 53,000 acre Rancho Mission Viejo nestled serenely in South Orange County. Deer and cattle roamed the hills of this old rancho, which was part of the historic Rancho Santa Margarita de las Flores Spanish Land Grant. In November 1963, Mission Viejo Company was formed and approached the O'Neill family to present them with a plan for the development of the western 10,000 acres of their ranch. 
This footage shows Tony and Jerome Moizo and Doug Avery, Alice O'Neill Avery, and here is Emma Daisy or Marguerite O'Neill in the center of her family, Jim West and Dick O'Neill. In 1964, Mission Viejo Company had only five employees, including a secretary and a bookkeeper. Tepfer immediately whipped out his colored pencils and began work on the master plan, which was approved the following year. Construction soon began on the La Paz Bridge to give Mission Viejo its first freeway access. And even this early film shows the soon to become traditional mission level of construction supervision and attention to detail. Here's what the bridge looked like from the train tracks before there was another side of town. And here's where it all began. The first homes went on the market in November of 1965, and Mission Viejo Company sold land to the Tustin Unified School District for the first high school, which wiped out some early red ink. Here's an excerpt from a 1972 company film depicting how Phil Riley, Jim Tepfer, Tom Blum, and Doug Osman made the sales pitch. Jim, why don't you explain to Bob uh, how the thing's going to lay out on the ground? Well, Phil, I think the, the site is ideally suited for a, a high school. And very simply, uh, this area and through here I see is most, most of your athletic fields and uh, the stadium. This ridge area would be primarily for your administration buildings and library. Classrooms probably over in this area here with your mass parking area here. Uh, fellas, what about utilities? There should be no problem, Jim. They'll all be in and ready when the site's created. Storm drain, water? No problem there either, Jim. We're going to run that water between the site, the high school, and the freeway. It's going to just be a great-looking site, Bob. Well, I can visualize the, uh, the school all right, but uh, I do have one problem. How am I going to justify it out here where there's no population? Bob, it's out in the boonies now, but it isn't going to be in the boonies for very long. When we commence to implement the plan that these fellows have come up with, uh, th the people will come. And we'll see to it that you get the football stadium built uh, at no cost to the district. In addition, we'll give you seven acres of land around those trees if you will agree to uh, save it as an agricultural area for 4-H activities for the high school kids. Now, if you're no longer in the boonies, you need a community newspaper. In 1966, the first Mission Viejo reporter, a completely unbiased paper, debuted. And Mission Viejo High School opened its doors. The first homeowners moved in, and Mount of Olives became Mission Viejo's first church. 1966 also saw the opening of the community's first post office at La Paz and Crisanta, and now Mission was officially a place. So work then began on making it truly a hometown. In 1967, La Paz Plaza was completed, and our first shopping center, and still Mission Viejo Company's corporate offices. And our first elementary school opened, named for Marguerite O'Neill. In June of 67, Phil Riley became the first reorganization survivor, and Mission had a new president. That was also the year Mission Impossible, also known as Mission Viejo Golf Club, debuted, and El Dorado Homes welcomed its first move-in. Then in December, the Mission Viejo Activities Committee was formed to present the first annual Christmas program. In 1968, after just three years, 65 million in construction had been completed and 8,000 residents occupied 2,500 homes. The $400,000 Montanoso Recreation Center opened that year to great excitement and the Mission Viejo Nadadores were born with 23 members under the part-time coaching of Tom Martin. Granada and Mission Ridge homes debuted as Mission Viejo became the fastest growing community in Orange County. Here's what we said then. For 26 consecutive openings, prospective buyers have camped out in trailers, 
cars, and tents for up to 10 days awaiting the availability of a new unit of homes. Those were the days when 51% of our sales were made by referrals from our own residents. Mission Viejo also became a college town with the dedication of Saddleback College by Governor Ronald Reagan. In 1969, Coronado Homes went on sale and Mission Viejo reached the 10,000 population mark. Burroughs Corporation announced construction of a $16 million Mission Viejo plant and a new player rode onto the scene. Do, 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 do. In October 1969, Philip Morris acquired a major interest in Mission Viejo Company. The final purchase from the O'Neill family and other shareholders was completed in September 1972. With the backing of a strong parent company, Mission Viejo continued to grow. In 1970, La Paz Medical Dental Center opened along with the first fire station. The community held its first St. Patrick's Parade and the first 4th of July picnic. Sierra Recreation Center opened. Three parks debuted, Wilderness Glen, El Dorado, and Granada. The year ended with the opening of Mission Viejo's first library on land donated by the company, and we saw our first movie theater open. 1971 saw a growing company with an expanding team of players. Madrid Homes opened with some unique advertising and the very affordable Aliso Villas went on the market. A year later, Barcelona Homes opened and the first family moved into Costa del Sol, a new neighborhood for active fogies in their mid-40s. <laughs> the $2 million Marguerite Recreation Center was completed the Nadadores grew to 300 swimmers, some of whom were not the children of Riley and Tepfer, and we hired a 23-year-old high school swim coach named Mark Schubert. Mission Viejo's population reached 20,000 happy homeowners. There was a lot of emphasis on creating community, not just housing tracks like uh, much of Orange County. From the start, 1966, Mission Viejo was a hit selling 700 homes that first year. Then, in mid-1967, Donald Brand moved on with his home building company to other projects, and Phil Riley took over the reins of Mission Viejo Company, continuing the team's vision, laying infrastructure, building homes, and the amenities that would help make Mission Viejo a true community. First to come, along with the model home compounds, were the retail shops, and the golf club and the recreation centers. La Paz Plaza opened in 1967 with a variety of shops, a bank, service station, and corporate offices of Mission Viejo Company. Under the stewardship of Tony Moizo, the Mission Viejo Golf Club opened in 1967 and became a major focal point for golf in not only Orange County, but Southern California. Many tournaments were held at the club that hosted numerous celebrities and dignitaries such as Clint Eastwood, Dean Martin, Andy Williams, and here the Navy's Blue Angels aerial team. Mononoso, uh, as Jim Gillern said, was the first rec center in 1968 and was oriented to social activities. Sierra opened in 1970 and was the hub of the swim club that later became the Natadors. Marguerite opened in 1972, it's now the YMCA Center, and it focused on sports and recreation opportunities. So under Riley's leadership, new schools were built, shopping centers opened, parks dedicated, and infrastructure constructed. But it was the abundance of activities and events that really brought this new community together. In 1967, the Mission Viejo Activities Committee was created to organize seasonal events throughout the year, such as Cinco de Mayo, uh, the 4th of July uh, Parade and Picnic, and the wild and woolly annual Mission Viejo Days, a five-day extravaganza. St. Patrick's Day Parade came in 1970, and the first Tour de Mission Viejo bike race was held in 1972. 
That same year, Philip Morris bought out all the shareholders of Mission Viejo Company, and Mission Viejo uh, MBC became a subsidiary of Philip Morris. Upon Philip Morris taking ownership, the succeeding years saw numerous high-profile events and activities come to the community. Tony Moizo and the O'Neill family moved on to develop Rancho Santa Margarita and the other communities within their ranch holdings. Phil Riley reshaped Mission Viejo Company's organization to take on new opportunities and challenges. Master plan communities were started in Tempe, Arizona, Aurora, Colorado, uh, Aliso Viejo, and the 25,000 acre Highlands Ranch community in South Denver, Colorado. Jim Teffer moved to Colorado and became president of Mission Viejo Company's new Colorado division. While the years have been good to Mission Viejo, and the master plan that Brand, Riley, and Teffer designed has largely stayed intact, we still get a little melancholy when you think of those places that aren't there anymore. For example, back before there was Kaleidoscope, there was old McDonald's Farm. Once a part of Knott's Berry Farm, uh, the owner, Bolton Shaw, on here on the right, moved all his animals, equipment, and corrals down to the seven acre uh, parcel at the corner of Crown Valley in Interstate 5. His animal farm and petting pens were a hit with kids, and his western barbecues and entertainment attracted a lot of families. Equestrian activities were a big part of South Orange County, and when um, Mission Viejo was conceived, uh, uh, 90, in 1967, the company opened the uh, Mission Viejo stables uh, just east of the Marguerite Rec Center. After grading began to encroach, the stables were moved to where the Home Depot and Animal Shelter are located, and it was closed when grading began for the Crown Commerce Center at Crown Valley and Marguerite. And who can forget when uh, taking your date to the movies was popular? Big screen movies came to Mission Viejo in 1970 with the opening of Cinema Viejo uh, behind La Paz Plaza. However, with the onset of multiple screens and more competition from video tape rentals, these single screen movie houses began to fold, and today Cinema Viejo is a church. If you were a teenager in the 70s, you would have called Mission Viejo Skateway the in place. Right, Mary Putman? <laughs> Opened in 1976 with the onset of disco music and with its funky lights, quadraphonic sound system, an ice blue epoxy skating floor, this was the most popular place in Saddleback Valley for teens and preteens. Mission Viejo Company not only built this one, but another one in Cyprus. Well, alas, John Travolta and Disco faded away, and lawsuits made the operation untenable, and it was sold to become Trader Joe's and Party City, now, now the popular place for grocery shopping and party supplies. In 1970, the County of Orange opened the Mission Viejo Library on the north side of uh, Cinema Viejo. And years later, the new Mission Viejo Library was built with a greatly expanded and modernized facility right here in the Civic Center. Today, the old library building is now a church office. And who can forget the only Kentucky Fried Chicken in the world with no bucket in the sky? Maybe it would have had that bucket if it wasn't owned by none other than Jim Tepper. Today, it's TK Burger. Incidentally, um, our office building was across the street um, and just downwind from this KFC. <laughs> so in the evenings when leaving the office for home, you, you couldn't avoid the smell of fried chicken. Some of us in here took to making sure our, um, our office windows and doors were shut before the evening batch of chicken began to be cooked. Most of you probably don't know that Chase Bank at La Paz and Marguerite uh, in the Ralph Shopping Center used to be the site of Mission Vale Realty, the home resale office for Mission Vale Company. You also probably didn't know that building, the, the building for the realty was manufactured in a factory known as Omni Housing, formed by Mission Vale Company in 1972. This building folded like a banker's box and was carted to the site on a flatbed and erected on a concrete slab. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough demand for these folding buildings to justify the manufacturing costs, and Omni Housing 
quietly folded, no pun intended. Mission Viejo has had a, a <coughs> numerous supermarket chains that are no longer here. You know, who can remember Safeway and Thrifty Mart, Alpha Beta, Lucky's? Um, they were here and now they're all gone, succumbing to mergers and competition. This Safeway was across from the Marguerite Recreation Center and is now an empty shell for lease. In the beginning, Mission Viejo had a 5,000 square foot Thrifty Mart Junior in what is now Starbucks at La Paz and Crisana. And if, and if you can kind of picture this, uh, where the um, servers are uh, fixing your coffee, that's where these checkout counters were. And I was in there a couple times um, when I was uh, first joined the company. Um, the company subsidized this store, but as the community grew, we began selling sites to supermarket chains. Uh, and incidentally, it was this Safeway site analysis that we did for Phil Riley that got him interested in why Mission Bay Company shouldn't be profiting from developing our own shopping centers, offices, and industrial parks. So in 1981, uh, Riley added business properties development to our home building activities and the Mission Viejo Business Properties Division was formed. Portola Plaza, Trabuco Hill Center, the Vons Pavilion Center down the block are all some of the projects that we built in uh, Mission Viejo. And who can remember when the shops at Mission Viejo were originally the Mission Viejo Mall? Opened in 1979 with Robinson's May Company, Bullock's, and Montgomery Wards. Today, all of these stores are gone, a result mainly of consumer, changing consumer tastes and the impact of online shopping. Where is this center going? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Incidentally, a story for another time is how we actually stole this site away from the Irvine Company, or we stole the mall away from the Irvine Company. Um, we beat them to the punch with some competitive intelligence. <laughs> story, story for afterwards. Following the purchase of Michigan Company by Philip Morris, Phil Riley had this building constructed in 1975 as the corporate headquarters for the company. Situated on the first model home compound near La Paz and Crisana, this building housed company executives and corporate departments until the mid-1990s when it was sold to become Crisana Courtyard Offices. Alas, as a result of tobacco litigation, Philip Morris made the decision to focus on its core business and in 1987 announced it would sell Mission Viejo Company. Phil Riley and Jim Teffer retired and Jim Gillern was named president. However, the sale didn't happen until 1997 when Shea Holmes bought the company. And during that period, all but a few executives retired or moved on. So in 1999, Connie Short and Linda Picard and I turned the lights off uh, of the corporate uh, building, locked the doors, and closed the book on the last chapter of Mission Hill Company. It's hard to believe that this wonderful place we call home started out with a chance opportunity and an idea to create a new town, different from most of Orange County up to that time. Today, we're beginning to realize the legacy that the original three men have left with us. Don Bren had the vision, the contacts, and the charisma that combined with the growth of Orange County and the trust and land resources of the O'Neill family got this new town started. Jim Teffer had the knowledge, experience, and local background to make the vision into a master plan. And through his energetic outreach to new home, homeowners, started the creation of the Mission Viejo community feeling. On October 12, 2019, Philip J. Riley passed away at the age of 90. His was the awesome responsibility of stewardship for the major growing period of Mission Viejo. He leaves a legacy of leadership from the beginning in 1963 until 1987 when he retired. At this time, we honor him for his contributions to the creation of this wonderful place, 
we call home, and for doing it the mission way. And now the end is near. Mission faces the final curtain. Our friends will say it clear. We'll state our case of which we're certain. We plan the very best we built each and every highway and more, much more than this. We did it the mission way. Setbacks, we've had a few. The lake was filled, we'd like to mention. We did what we came to do, and built our dreams without exception. We designed each master plan, each careful Thank you.